Am I the asshole for not wanting to join my wife and her parents in the car for a road trip? Okay so my wife F24 and her parents drive down to Atlanta from where we live in Boston every year during October fall break to spend a week down there since the rest of her family lives there. This year she informed me about the trip and I assumed it would be just her going since I've never been invited previously and I get very car sick. My car sickness is bad enough that I can't sit in a car for more than 10-20 minutes without getting seriously nauseous and throwing up and I don't even own my own car since I can't drive it anywhere more than 10 miles away. However I was told that her parents wanted me to tag along with them since I was now part of the family and should partake in family traditions. I brought it up to my wife that she knows I can't sit through any long car rides so I couldn't join them on the drive but I'd be happy to book a flight and meet them at the destination. She told me that wouldn't work since they were making multiple pit stops during the drive and spending evenings doing activities that she wanted me to join them for. So I offered to ride my motorcycle along with them and that way I'd have my own transportations when we got there this seemed to be enough of a compromise for her and she let her parents know. So she let her parents know and they called me up and seemed pretty annoyed and they told me now that in part of their family I should be making personal sacrifices to be part of their traditions. After a bit of back and forth I told them if they couldn't respect my needs then I would perfectly okay with dropping out off the trip which was enough to get them to stop trying to convince me to sit in the car with them. After the call my wife was pretty mad at me for being rude to her parents and not trying to convince them more before giving them a ultimatum. Not the asshole. The car sickness should be more than enough. Her parents wanted me to tag along with them since I was now part of the family and should partake in family traditions. That's not really an invitation. What other expectations could be next? They called me up and seemed pretty annoyed and they told me now that in part of their family I should be making personal sacrifices to be part of their traditions. Are you sure that it's not a cult? Who the hell drives from Boston to Atlanta, with in-laws? That's a relationship wrecker of a trip bro. Not the asshole. Your wife is though. An extended road trip would be miserable for you and for them. You don't want to be queasy and sick the whole time and no one wants someone getting sick in their car. Someone's health should not be sacrificed in order to maintain tradition. I would tell your wife that the fact her parents tried to browbeat you into it and she's defending it is not acceptable. Not the asshole. You could join them in the car and just puke all over them, maybe that would teach them. How utterly stupid they are by trying to pressure you to sit in the car when you offered a perfectly acceptable alternative by joining in on the trip on your motorcycle. Not the asshole. And really, what is wrong with your wife? Trying to convince them more? What part of you get car sick and vomit after 10-20 minutes in a car every single time does she and her parents not understand? If they were my parents I'd be asking them do you want him to demonstrate? Ridiculous. Not the asshole and a warning I am a petty person. I would say okay and then just bath in the car. 20 minutes into the trip you should be close enough to make your way home from wherever you are and they can still have a reminder of you for the rest of the journey. Not the asshole. I'm sorry you get such severe car sickness. I can't imagine having that. Shit sounds awful. Not the asshole. If they keep pushing it, order a box of those hospital sick bags and make them regret it. Please. Vomit. All over. Their. Car. Please. It would make me so happy. Just let the chunks fly. So, let's agree that people who tell you that you're part of their family now, in order to compel a certain behavior are being controlling and, shitty. You were not rude to state your boundary. If your wife knows about this issue and is just now pushing for this kind of forced car ride, she's probably being pushed by her parents to do so. Not the asshole. Nata. Personally, I'd maliciously comply. Get the in-laws to sign a waiver saying I'm not liable for any financial repercussions. Oops, missed the bag. Oops, missed it again. Then buy a return flight from Atlanta and let them smell the regret the whole way home.
go with them, and take a bag to be sick in. Tell them you feel nauseous, and then be sick. It'll be the last one you have to do. Good luck bro. Not the asshole. You're the only one who isn't the R in this post. Not the asshole. Serious car sickness long ass road trip? Nope. Road trip with in-laws? Nope. Throwing up on in-laws or their car? Nope. Tagging along on family trip feeling awkward and nauseated? Nope nope nope. You're offering to drive yourself fucking miles on a bike in order to comply with their request that you join this trip, that's huge. Enough. Not the asshole. Although I would be tempted cause I'm petty AF to go in the car and throw my guts up repeatedly on them and their car good luck getting that stench out, smiley face, smiley face. Also, your wife should be mad at her parents for not respecting your reasons which are super valid in fact she should have shot their original idea down as fast as they said it, but she didn't, maybe you have a problem there. Oh look, OP married someone who can't tell their parents no. Not the asshole but you have an unsupportive wife problem. If they insist, and you concede, make sure to load up your digestive system with Taco Bell, first. Not the asshole. Not even remotely. Maybe they think you're exaggerating if they've never seen firsthand how bad your car sickness is, but your wife needs to have your back on that. Being family now goes both ways. Not the asshole although sometime you might take a very shirt local trip and vomit on them, just to make your point. It's nice they invited you. It's not that that wouldn't take no, or your very reasonable compromises as an answer. And personally, I think this trip sounds like a little slice of hell, all of you in a car for what, 20 plus hours of driving? And stops to sightsee, and you sick as a dog, no doubt in the back seat. Uck. Your wife is the biggest AH, for not having your back and not standing up for you, knowing that you have a condition, just saying. Oh, I'd go ahead and go. And every single time I got car sick, I'd let fly. Bet after a couple of rounds they'd be real sorry they insisted. I'm sorry your wife doesn't have your back, she should. For her to be angry over something you can't help or control, i.e., car sickness, and dismiss your feelings on the matter says a lot about where you stand in her pecking order. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. How do they not know they will regret forcing you into a car? Not the asshole. Your wife did the right thing by telling her parents about the compromise, they should not have called you. When they did call you, your wife should have backed you up, since they went around her and stepped on some serious boundaries to do so. I wouldn't want to go either after that exchange, but talk it out with your wife. Let her know that they were the rude ones. You and your wife had made a decision as a couple and her parents didn't respect that. If they act like this over something so simple, what is going to happen for bigger decisions issues? Not the asshole it is about time they realize that you are two sets of adults planning a trip together, not one set of parents planning a trip for themselves and some children. They don't get to just dictate everything. Don't give in on this. That won't be possible is a good phrase to have in your pocket, and once it is used they shouldn't keep trying to convince you. Not the asshole. I think you should go in their car and throw up all over it and them. I truly don't understand how they expect you to just put up serious car sickness for the sake of family. Not the asshole. Or you could go and throw up in all of their faces. Set them straight. Don't tolerate this behavior. Not the asshole but begs the question of why not just pop some gravel drama in before the trip and avoid the nausea altogether? Not the asshole but why do you get car sick but not motorcycle sick? Not the asshole. Throw up in the car 20 minutes into the trip, they'll take you home and you can ride your bike for the trip. Not the asshole but get some Zofran. No more than 20 minutes in car? There are meds. Not the asshole for not wanting to go on the trip. But you're the asshole for not seeing an ENT and or a gastroenterologist because being sick after 10 minutes in a car is not normal. Am I the asshole? 
for telling my son that he's not coming on vacation because he didn't check his emails. I'm planning a family Thanksgiving vacation and a really good deal came up to go to the Cook Islands. I emailed my son 20 yearly on Friday and called Sunday to see if he wanted to go. He's in college and I'm not wasting money on a ticket if he didn't want to go. I needed to know by today because I have to get visas for my 16, 11 and 8 year sons. Well he didn't so I bought the package. Just now he texted me saying he wanted to go. I said too late. Already bought the tickets. Next time check your email or answer your fucking phone. He said most people communicate on text. I said well most people don't get to go to the Cook Islands. Now his mom my ex is trying to tell me that he's Gen Z and text is their primary communication format. Had I texted him, then he would have responded. I said I don't care. I'm well in my 40s and check my all of my communication formats because I don't want to miss anything. You're the asshole. I can see a why doesn't my kid talk to me anymore? Post in your future. You're the asshole. You act like call me important would be so hard to text. Yes, you're a control freak. You're the asshole. You're the asshole. It's not even a question. Especially by the way you responded. Some people shouldn't procreate. You're the asshole poor young man. You're the asshole kinda sounds like the son dodged a bullet not having to travel with you honestly. Yeesh. Not the asshole it's your money not his. If he wants to go he can pay for his own ticket he's a grown ass man. I'm in my 60s and check email once a day, if that. Otherwise, it's text that's how the world has moved on, dad. Even if it hadn't, your punishment is weirdly disproportional. Missing a movie night might be appropriate as a lesson. Cutting your son out of an important family trip culturally enriching experience for something so petty. You're the asshole, in giant glowing letters across the Cook Island skies. I hope when you look up at those skies, you really can't stop seeing it. You never wanted him to go. This was intentional and you're the asshole massively. Don't expect your son to maintain contact with you if you keep this shit up. I'm 48 and it's been 4 years since I spoke to my father. I wish I made that decision years ago. Jiminy Christmas, my mother's 80 and she texts all the time. In fact, the rule is that texts are for everyday chit chat, but if it's serious, you call. The only time my mother or I send each other email is if we're sending a gift card or an online greeting card, stuff like that. You're the asshole. You obviously don't like your son and didn't want him to come, under the guise of let this be a lesson to you. But of course you'll be shocked when he goes LC North Carolina in a year or so. Coming from a Gen Z all I know is if I have a missed call from my parents specifically my mom I call her back I don't check voicemail or shoot her a text if it's late at night. But she also loves me enough that she won't plan anything until I can confirm, or works around my schedule if needed. Stuck between ESH and YTA. You pretty much win your the asshole award. What worse? If he's already in college you probably know he prefers text over, email? Are you effed and serious? You probably just don't like texting, cause it's what the kids do. So you lashed out at your own son over it. Dude. That's bad form. Kudos for being an R though. Most posts on here I see are like, am I the asshole? H because I think puppies are cute? Or am I the asshole? H because I helped my friend beat cancer? So, at least we got a real one here. You're the asshole who the fuck emails their son WTF? You're the asshole. Shit dad. You're the asshole. You could have waited until the end of the day on Monday to buy the tickets. Also, why did you make a different decision for a major vacation? Surely you had to be planning this vacation for some time? but didn't include your son on the planning. Hair. You don't want to miss anything BC you're a lonely miserable man and you're hoping someone anyone will reach out to you someday. Erta. 
Info tell me about past enforcement of your I call you pick up rule. I feel like that rule might be unreasonable, but if it's been clearly established and consistently enforced and not abused by you then not the asshole. If you were just looking for a reason not to buy his ticket, you don't need to come here for your judgment you already know. So my dad is much older than you I'm about your age and he will email me details and then send a text or I am of hey I sent you an important email. You set him up for failure in such a way you think you will be blameless. Nice try, still an R. You're the asshole. You're the asshole. You clearly didn't want him to actually come because you are doing everything imaginable to contact him while still ensuring he won't be likely to respond. What kind of idiot thinks a college student is going to be checking their emails over the weekend? And you called one time? Whoopty fucking do. If you really wanted him to come you would have tried harder to communicate. You couldn't have sent a stupid text. I'm sure you can find a way to add him. Don't risk your relationship over this. He's 20 and not waiting by the phone for your calls. Add him, enjoy a great family vacation and make some good memories instead of being so stuck in the mud. Life is short, kids grow up. There will be a day when you'll need him. You're the asshole. You're the asshole I'm in my 40s and my main communication method is text, so your excuse about that is absolute nonsense. You clearly didn't want your kid to come so did the bare minimum to let him know about it and then booked before he'd had a reasonable chance to get back to you. So, you are having Thanksgiving for the family, but not him, because he wasn't available fast enough? You're the asshole. He had no way to know it was time sensitive if he even saw that you called. And if you hadn't already discussed the possibility, then you decided this on a whim. Not the asshole he could set up alerts on his phone. My main Gmail the one people have not companies pings when I get an email. You're the asshole. You sound like a huge tixk. I emailed my 20 year old, zany face, crying face, um you seem deliberate, maybe he's better off not going with your toxic personality. Not the asshole. You tried all means of communications to get a hold of him. What if it had been an emergency and not a free trip? If he's old enough to be on his own, he's old enough to answer the phone. And to all those saying he's the R, what is he supposed to do? Let everyone miss out because one person can't get their poop in a group. You're the asshole. Why did you text him to check his email for urgent vacation info? How could he know there was urgent info if you never told him? I would have made contact. You're the asshole. You're the asshole. A text would have taken two minutes, and frankly I am older than you and text, not email things like that. Because it is like a phone yes you're the asshole bring your maybe you have moved on with new family you can control so your son isn't as important. Is that it? You're the asshole. You're the R. Majorly. Be honest here, what animosity did you have with your son prior to this event? Had you had issues with lack of communication and this was your attempt to prove a point? He didn't read an email, over a weekend, or immediately call you back when you didn't leave a message. Does that really warrant the level of contempt you clearly have about this situation? Well here's one for you you're the fucking parent, give your kid a break. Are you obligated to put in a little more effort to see if he wants to go? No. Does your rigidity in your rules, and apparent delight in getting to punish him for not responding to you immediately make you an asshole? Yes. You're the asshole, and frankly I wouldn't answer a call from you either. Can't you add a ticket now? Or are you just drawing a line in the sand because you're the asshole? I'm confused. Shouldn't you want to go on vacation with your son? You're the asshole. You're the asshole. You're well into your forties and claim that communicating by text is somehow out of your wheelhouse. My aunts and uncles are in their sixties and communicate by text almost exclusively. You just wanted to be a jerk. You didn't want to spend money on him and went about it in a sneaky way. Don't try to play the victim now when you got caught. Am I the asshole? 
for telling my husband he needs to draw clear lines with the mother for his child. Not the asshole, but they need a formal agreement as to parenting and payment of expenses. If she can't afford the school the child has been going to, then the child can go to public school. He should not be paying for her vacations with mom. That is for mom to pay for or she can leave the child home with him while she goes. This isn't to draw clear lines, it is get a formal agreement and hold her to it. She can't pay her half of the home, then sell the home and she can figure out her place to live. Not the asshole. She suddenly can't pay for childcare expenses right after a two-week international vacation? Ex-girlfriend has decided to try to squeeze as much money as she can get out of your husband. Not the asshole. If mom can't afford to pay, maybe she shouldn't be going on fancy trips and sending her daughter to a private school. Not the asshole. It does sound like a more formalized child support system needs to be put in place. However, if they've always had a great co-parenting relationship and this is a newer development, perhaps he should go to her as a friend and ask her what's up and what has changed for her financially. Do they have a court-mandated or legal custody child support agreement? If not, it sounds like they need one, or else she's likely to keep pulling this crap in the future. My sticking point in all of on earth would he pay anything for a two-week international vacation that he was not attending? He very much needs to need to get a court order stating exactly how much he has to pay for anything. Mom needs to figure her own finances out. I say this as a single mom. Not the asshole ex is basically making him pay for the trip without saying the money was for it. By using money she should have paid for rent tuition she needs him to cover. So in the end he's paying for the trip the daughter went on. I wouldn't be happy if you have make up the gap. There shouldn't be a gap. The trip made the gap. Not the asshole. Seems like the ex is milking him every chance she gets and is beginning to take advantage of him. Furthermore this is putting you and him at odds which is not healthy for your marriage. If court ordered papers are not already in place then perhaps talking to an attorney regarding child custody could help your situation. He would not be on the hook for 50 or 100 percent of the costs to take care of his daughter. This certainly is not the solution for everyone, but it is a possible path if papers are not already in place. It can be traumatic for the child also to go through it, so keep that in mind as well. This is why you have lawyers. There's a formula they follow based on many factors and then maybe one of the parents has to pay or it's 50-50. But your husband is being taken advantage of and I bet it's because the ex feels your income means it'll benefit her too. I don't blame you for being upset. Sit down with the husband and get this straightened out or else this will be your life. Not the asshole. Does mom know you want to have a baby? She may be doing this because of that. Not the asshole she's doing it on purpose. Info is there a custody agreement and child support? When it comes to finances, do they both make equal amounts or does one person make significantly less? Not the asshole. Two week long international trip, and can't cover kids tuition, sorry, the math ain't mathing. He has every right and reason to ask her why she's asking him to pitch in more than previously. If he's not pressing her, and then telling you you need to hold off on your own future family planning, that's a problem. Not the asshole not being able to pay for basic expenses like school and household goods after a two-week vacation is awfully suspicious. He needs to dig a little deeper into what's going on. Did she lose her job? Blow the money on something unnecessary? Need a major repair for a car or house expense? Or is she just not interested in splitting expenses evenly and fairly anymore? Not the asshole. Sounds like X has decided that there are two incomes in your household now so she wants more money. Time to go the formal route and get it all made legal. She is taking advantage. You should not have to put your plans on hold due to her greed. Several people here have asked what the custody situation looks like even if there is no formal agreement, who has her most of the time. If it's truly a 50-50 custody arrangement that's one thing, 
But if her mom has her more often then both of them contributing 50-50 financially is not fair to the mom. I certainly don't think he needs to be financing his ex's vacation but otherwise I think it makes sense to have a formal agreement since he is now married to you. You really need to rethink this relationship. You will never get to have the child you want and he will always put the ex above you. Maybe it's time to move on and find someone who wants to have children with you. He is not it. It's not wrong for him to want to support his child, but he does not have to support his ex. Maybe a trial separation to see how he wants to proceed and if he does not want to have a life with you then you need to move on. Don't waste another five years hoping he will come to terms with what you want also. In photos your husband have a legally binding agreement on child support and custody? Because he needs one. It sounds to me like the ex decided that since he got married, he has more money assuming you have a job so she wants more money. That's not how child support works. He is not responsible for the ex's vacations. The ex is not responsible for his vacations. If the ex can't afford to take her child, she should make arrangements for the child to be with someone preferably the other parent or be not go on vacation. See a lawyer ASAP. Nata and this needs to be nipped in the butt ASAP or it's going to have a very damaging effect on your relationship also if she can't afford her part of the tuition anymore his daughter doesn't need to be going there. Where were your kids going to go? Unfortunately it looks like you will be getting that baggage you didn't want. So they have always had a great co-parenting relationship? Is she trying to sabotage your relationship? Or has he always helped her this much? He sounds like a good a pushover, will she pay for half of daughter's expenses if you and he go on a vacation? Of course, not. Not the asshole. Not the asshole, but co-parenting without a court-ordered agreement is a mess. Been there, doing that, if I knew then what I know now, I wouldn't have married my husband until he got one. And it only gets worse when you have kids. She had money for an international vacation but now can't afford her kid. Yeah, okay. If he's 50-50 with no divorce agreement, he likely won't pay anything above agreed upon expenses. It's worth the court fee, and your sanity when BM can't pull this crap anymore. Nata you and him need to sit down and figure this out because you shouldn't be putting your family on hold because of his ex. You and him need to go to court and get this ironed out and put this all in writing so you can budget for your child. This dynamic is going to create resentment for you. This is exactly how these posts go on I have always had firm boundaries about the people I would start a relationship with and their lifestyles. Two I made an exception for this person and now I am unhappy with my circumstances. What should I do? Not the asshole. I would never expect my ex to pay for to pay for anything on vacation I took our kids on. That's not how that works. Not the asshole but I suggest you see the writing on the wall and get out. There are going to be problems from here on out. Remember you told yourself to never marry a man with children? You were right from the get-go. It's a hard pill to swallow but it's true. But you are married to an idiot. Mom wants to go on vacation with daughter? She pays for daughter 100, period. Dad, you and daughter go on vacation? Dad pays for daughter 100. Now that you're married your income might be considered as part of child support depending on state FYI, particularly if you file taxes together, lawyer up and get answers. Time to get a financial order in place. X is going to bleed him dry. Not the asshole. UDH needs to talk to his ex and tell her they have a court support plan. He will go back to court if need be, in case his ex's finance have changed. This shouldn't be just because she says so. He needs to do what's in the best interest of his daughter, but his ex has to do her share as well. Where has his ex's dollar gone to? Job loss here just. Info do they have a court order agreement on custody and child support? There is nothing wrong with you that you have to settle for someone else's discards. Find a man who is 100% yours. Am I the asshole?
for refusing to take less hours at work even though my wife's alone with the sick kids all day. I 37M have been with my wife since senior our senior year in high school. We have six kids between the ages 7 15. I work Monday Friday 14 hours 3 days a week, 12 hour 2 days my wife is a stay at home mom. Before I get the hate comments as I've seen in the past, I am extremely grateful. My days off, I take the kids out and my wife has the day to herself or she goes out and I handle chores. I always remind my wife, and take her out on date nights a few times a month on my days off. My sister comes by and helps out some days throughout the week. We had a financial crisis earlier this year, which resulted in me having these extra hours. It's completely necessary. Four of our kids do extracurricular, we have to pay for and other necessities. My wife has recently been asking me to cut back hours which has been causing arguments bc it's simply impossible at the moment. We have young twins, and earlier this week they got the flu which spread all throughout our home which had the kids home from school for majority of the week. I could not call off, but it left my wife extremely stressed out. One of our children has autism, and when they are sick it is a very big crisis in the house with tantrums. I felt horribly but I couldn't call off. Basically today my wife shouted at me for over an hour for refusing to take less hours, because she is so stressed. She said I get to escape at work, and she has a household to run. I tried to explain that I'd love more than anything to be home more but I couldn't, but she continued yelling saying I was the problem. Am I the asshole? Nah, I guess. If you can't call off, you can't call off. But I question whether the extracurricular activities are important enough to be worth burning out your wife. 1. You're going to give yourself a heart attack working that schedule. 2. Not the asshole for trying to support your family, but one income with six kids in this economy? Why, just why? I don't know man. 66 hours a week doesn't sound like an escape to me. That sounds like hell. On your next day off, can you two sit down and go through your budget? Maybe you can work less hours if sacrifices are made in other areas and you both are willing to do that. But also going through the budget can also reinforce why you are working those additional hours and it also can help you go over everything with a fine tooth comb to be able to see do you really need HBO Max obviously, just an example and where else corners can be cut. Not the asshole. Nah but you need to have a sit down with your wife. Your current situation seems like it's unsustainable. I know your wife doesn't want to take away your kids extracurricular stuff but you seriously need to think about tightening the belt. Whether that means getting rid of the extracurricular stuff, cutting down on quality of life expenses or moving somewhere cheaper. It seems like things are at their limit when everything is working out but adding additional stress like the kids being sick and your house of cards starts to fall apart. Plus there may not be any guarantee your extra hours will always be there. Edited upon recommendation. Folks. Don't have six kids. Nah but this situation isn't sustainable. Is it possible for her to get a part-time job that literally just pays for childcare during her time working? If she considers your job to be a break, maybe a job of her own is what she needs. She'd get to interact with other adults and not be on constant child duty. Taking care of kids especially that many means your brain can literally not shut off for one second. That's not true in most workplaces. It might be a potential solution for you. I wish you both the best this is hopefully the hardest things will be. Info is there an end date established for these extreme work hours? Not just for your wife's sake but also for your own. At this rate both you and your wife are going to burn out and then what happens? I can't decide between nah and esh honestly it sounds like you're both living in hell. This is one of the risks with having so many kids one financial issue, and you're in this position. Obviously you have the kids so you can't change that now, but you both willingly had this many kids knowing that kids are expensive and get sick often. This is just an awful situation for everyone, and unfortunately it won't last. Something's gotta give here. Someone will blow up or perhaps worse. 
something needs to change or there will be serious consequences. Have you thought about your own health OP between the work hours and emotional stress? I'm exhausted just imagining your lives. As others have said, this is unsustainable. Do you have an end date in sight for these extra hours? It's obvious you want to give your kids every possible opportunity. They need their mom and dad to be healthy and present. Are these extracurriculars really so important that you need to work 12 to 14 hours a day while your wife struggles to hold everything together? No judgment intended, only compassion. If there's an end in sight, then I wish you strength. If not, perhaps it's time to reconsider a few things. 6 Kids Get the snip, dude. Do not make things harder by adding to your brood. ESH You both do for bringing six kids into this world with precarious finances and especially not stopping after you realized one was autistic and needed more support. I don't think you suck for working all those hours and your wife doesn't get to complain cause this is the consequence of both your actions. She's perfectly capable of working with the youngest being seven so if she wants you home more she needs to get a job during the day. Otherwise you're both going to keep working yourselves to the bone. 6 Kids Get a Hobby Geez ESH 6 Kids Come on 6 Kids WTF Stop knocking her up if you can't afford it. Light not the asshole. Overall NAH but the hour of yelling is not okay. This sounds like an incredibly difficult situation, and well outside the capabilities of am I the asshole? To weigh in on. All I can advise is to sit down with her and discuss both your hours, responsibilities, and budget, and figure out if there is anything you can do to mitigate it. You are both burning out. You need to work together to survive. Not the asshole. All of your children are school age, so your wife can get a PT job if she wants you to work fewer hours. Extracurriculars are not necessities. A burnt out caregiver, esp to a kid with special needs, is a dangerous thing. She is asking you for help. You need to hear her up. Having six kids is so much work, and she's doing it alone essentially. She shouted at your for an hour. That lady doesn't have an hour to spare. That's how serious it is. She won't have a house to run if you don't work. Six kids is probably unreasonable unless you're wealthy or you accept your life will be very, very hard. Those are just the facts. Not the asshole kids are expensive and your wife is refusing to let them drop their extracurriculars. Sure she's stressed but so are you. We have six kids between the ages 7-15. SH, you had more kids than you can care for. Not the asshole. Have your wife calculate what expense can be cut so that you may cut your hours. A solution she gets a part time job kids are in school and old enough to do chores. She don't need to be in that house 24 hours a day. She wants you home more, she can go make some money herself. Autistic will qualify for services that can get him away with a coach or behavior person. Nah. Do you ever sleep? This whole situation sounds so stressful for both of you. You both seem like you're at your wits end dealing with everything. Do you have relatives who could take the pressure off? I feel like it's important to talk to each other about what you're going through. As long as it's not approached as a fight. Just a conversation where you appreciate each other's difficulties and work forward together as a team. I can't even imagine handling six kids' best wishes. Not the asshole but goddamn six kids. The fuck did you guys think was gonna happen trying to breed your own baseball team? Not the asshole, you have to support the family but extracurricular activities are not necessities. Your wife is getting burnt out, I would think you're getting burnt out with all the hours you put in. You two really need to sit down, go over your finances together, and decide what extras go, because they have to for both your sakes. Am I the asshole? For making dinner for a friend with allergy not knowing miso isn't gluten free? My partner and I 35 NB and 60 M hosted a dinner party for some friends, let's call them Mark and Gertrude. 
Gertrude is allergic to gluten so cooking for her has always been a bit of a challenge. I really didn't want to have a dinner party on the Wednesday because I am the gourmet cook in the household and people expect me to make gourmet food for them. I work late that day so the time I start cooking dinner, I am already exhausted. But Mark and Gertrude insisted on coming ASAP. Because Gertrude is unemployed while Mark was recently laid off. I offered to refer him to my current employer who is hiring for multiple positions and Mark wants to see what's available. So I ended my WFH day at 3.30 and began slow cooking oxtail stew. I mix my own sauce using fresh ingredients and a little bit of miso. For some reason most probably tiredness kept thinking miso is gluten free because it's made of soy, not wheat or corn. My partner Casper offered me to help me do some cooking and when he saw the miso, told me that miso can have trace gluten in it and we can't serve the ox tail. By the time dinner had been stewing for over 1.5 hours and there was not enough time to make anything else. So we ordered sushi takeaway instead. When Gertrude and Mark arrived she was excited to smell the oxtail cooking on the stove, because that was her favorite. I apologized and explained the situation and offered sushi instead. Gertrude was quiet the whole evening and star daggers at me. It got worse because Casper and Mark are both socially inept and dug into the oxtail stew while commenting on how delicious it was. At that moment I really wanted to dig a hole in the ground and disappear. Later today I saw that Gertrude had made a passive aggressive social media post calling me TA without actually naming me. Her words were something along the lines of some stupid asshole thought it was a good idea to add miso in a dish that never required miso for thousands of years just to feel smart. And now my dinner was ruined. SMH. The comments were agreeing with her and there are other allergic people calling me an ignorant asshole. And I just feel really bad. I tried to do two nice things for Mark and ended up being called TA. So am I the asshole? Of course you're not the asshole. You didn't know me so had gluten. Gertrude really overreacted. I don't know why she stared daggers at you. You provided something else to eat. I'm sure it's not the first time she's been at a meal while others ate something she couldn't have. And to shame you about it on social media was disgraceful. She needs to get over herself. They don't sound like good friends either, insisting they come over early. Don't they understand the meaning of the word no? I'd have been tempted to tell them if they came early I wouldn't open the door. I would never invite these assholes to dinner again. They insisted on coming on an inconvenient night. You made an error so ordered take out sushi and instead of saying thank you she posts on social media about it. Wow. I can't fathom the rudeness. Not the asshole. So let me summarize and see if I have this straight. A couple of unemployed moochers invited themselves to your house for dinner on a weeknight. Then when you accidentally put gluten in one of the dishes, you made accommodations for the gluten allergy person. And they complained about the food? Not the asshole. I spent hours cooking dinner for a couple of guests midweek after a long day, because one of them wanted to come over so I could do them a favor. In my exhaustion, I made a mistake and included an ingredient one of them was allergic to. I immediately ordered food in, as there was no time to cook something else from scratch, and felt awful because all that effort had been wasted. Then, the guest decided I had been an asshole to her for my honest mistake, and bitches about it on social media, calling me names. I don't think I'll be cooking for her again. Some stupid now my dinner was ruined. Wow. The entitlement. You understand that you no longer have to invite Gertrude over anymore, right? Themes fying words. Bugs Bunny. You made a mistake. Not the asshole don't cook for her again. What did the label on the miso say? I am gluten intolerant the white miso paste I buy does not list any gluten allergens, and has never caused me any problems. Looking it up, I see that miso paste made with fermented soy and rice is gluten free like mine, while some kinds may have some fermented wheat or barley and are not gluten free. Not the asshole.
you didn't intentionally do anything wrong. By the time it was pointed out to you that miso contained trace amounts of gluten, it was too late to do anything. UDID provides sushi for her to eat. Gertrude is an R. Instead of accepting what happened as a mistake, she chose to roast you on social media. Not a mature or nice person. I personally would never, ever, invite them to dinner again. Let your partner meet Mark for coffee or lunch if they want to catch up or network. Hugs and good luck. She got sushi and she complained about a ruined dinner? X200B. People should be so lucky. X200B. Not the asshole. X200B. Edit also not all miso has gluten. So you weren't even necessarily wrong in the first place. Not the asshole. Your unemployed friends insisted on coming ASAP for dinner, used an ingredient that is usually gluten-free not all miso labels have the ingredients in a language other than Japanese, you provided a reasonable substitute for the guest, and she sniped at you online. Please tell me she didn't use soy sauce with her sushi. Not the asshole, but please never cook for Mark and Gertrude again. Sit Casper down, show him this post and Gertrude's post and explain how exhausting it is to go out of your way only to be bashed online for a small mistake. You cook when you feel like it not when someone forces you into a corner by coming over ASAP. Gertrude can kick rocks. Not the asshole. You made a mistake and corrected it. But 35 and 60? What's up with that? Not the asshole. That would be the last time she was able to cross over my threshold, much less eat my food. Not the asshole. Gertrude sounds like an awful human being. You tried doing something nice for them and made a mistake. I also never would have thought miso had gluten in it. Also, they invited themselves over to your house for dinner expecting some gourmet meal likely because they're struggling financially right now and didn't want to pay to go out. I would seriously hesitate to ever spend time with her again. The fact that you're even questioning how big of an asshole move that is for her to make is kind of ridiculous. Not the asshole. You made an honest mistake and tried to rectify within the time limits you had available. Gertrude's post is. Unbelievable. Her dinner was ruined. Why are you calling them your friends again? Nata but you need to learn to stand up for yourself a lot more invite people when it's convenient, not when they want to come and order something easy if it's a weeknight start drawing some boundaries and saying no. Good lord, not the asshole what an ungrateful drama queen. You made a mistake, admitted it, and provided a perfectly good backup. She's ridiculous. Not the asshole. Having a family member who suffers with celiac disease, I know how difficult it is to make sure foods and other substances don't contain gluten. You were trying to be a gracious host to a couple who, in your own words, imposed themselves on you at an inconvenient time for which you had to rearrange your working day. As far as using miso, I often use miso or tamari to add a savory flavor to sauces. Just don't invite Gertrude anymore. Not the asshole Gertrude has been very rude. It was an honest mistake and you gracefully provided her with an alternative. She seems entitled. Urging you to cook on a busy day and then complaining because she didn't get to eat what she prefers. Your Natar and these people are not your friends. They're users and rude. Cut off contact and move on. No loss for you. Not the asshole, found a problem before it became a health issue. Gertrude on the other hand is unhinged, saying her dinner was ruined. I hope you never cook for them again. Not the asshole. Gertrude needs to learn some manners. There was nothing socially inept about Mark and Casper eating the stew, it was there to be eaten. You made a simple mistake it wasn't out of ignorance or made deliberately, it was just a simple mistake and you offered an alternative. It's not your fault Gertrude is a graceless, vengeful moron. Personally, she'd never be invited back to my house again unless she offered a genuine apology for her behavior. Am I the asshole? For not telling people where my grandparents are from? My wife really hates that I don't tell people the whole truth about where my grandparents are from. 
In the past, I've had some people react oddly and in some cases be somewhat racist after telling them my father's family is Polish. Typical Polish joke stuff but it bothered me I must admit. Before she died, my grandmother happened to mention that actually, our family had only been in Poland for a couple generations and had been forced to move from France in the Napoleonic Wars which apparently many had to. As a result, I've taken to simply telling people that I'm French when asked what my ancestry is as my mother's side of the family is French as well. For some reason, this bothers my wife to no end to the point where she'll actively challenge me when I answer this way in front of others by saying things like why don't you tell them where you're really from? This has caused some conflict in our relationship as I believe it's nobody's business what my background is and I'm free to answer in any way I choose, not to mention that my answer is technically true. Am I the asshole? Not the asshole but how does your ancestry come so regularly that this has become a thing? Also why does it matter to your wife weird? Not the asshole. I answer this question with I am a typical American mutt. If people insist, I answer well it is not all known but if you're asking about culture, I grew up Irish and Italian Catholic, if that helps. Or you could flat out tell people that Polish jokes are really effing offensive after you tell them the story about your family fleeing the Napoleonic Wars. Not the asshole but, you're not exactly French. Why not just say you're American or Canadian or Australian or whatever country you're from? So weird that this is a topic that comes up much. Aren't you American? Just say that. Not the asshole. But why does people ask this often that it's actually an issue? Why don't you just tell people where you are from? You don't need to answer questions about where your grandparents are from. Not the asshole but, dear lord, how is this coming up so often? I've talked about my genetic background maybe six times in my entire life. Once in kindergarten to do the family tree, once when an obsessive ex grilled me over my background, once with a genetic counselor when we started doing pregnancy stuff, and maybe two or three other times. Total. Not the asshole but deciding having French heritage was better than Polish is wild. Just say you're a mutt. That's as specific as I ever get. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. Not that it matters, but did your family continue to identify as French people living in Poland? Or did they see themselves as Polish? I ask BC I have a similar issue describing my paternal grandfather's ancestry when people want to know my background. Not the asshole. My mom's response was always, we're European stew a bit of several things. ESH. What a weird hill for either of you to die on. Not the asshole. Kind of sad that you are having to do this. I would much rather tell people who make Polish jokes to pound sand instead of denying my heritage. But seriously why do you have so many R's in your life that make fun of your nationality? Honestly, Polish jokes were a hack comedy thing in the 70s and 80s. Really surprised people would still be doing that. My grandparents literally never come up in a conversation. Why do you feel the need to talk about them much? I don't get it at all. It sounds like there are a lot of people asking about your heritage. Why? My father's family came from Poland, emigrated to Hungary, and then came to the US, and I'm proud of that. There are jokes about every race, nationality, and color. And sometimes the funniest ones are about a group I belong to. Lighten up. Info why is your wife so passionate about correcting you in public, on something that doesn't matter much either way? Is this the only area she acts like a bully about, in your life together? Or are there others? As a European, respectfully, unless your parents came from a different country, it's super weird to consider yourself any nationality other than the one you actually have. Like you're not French in our eyes, or Polish. You are of French or Polish descent. And that's not about race or passports, it's just fine to be American. It's just wild when people say they are German because their great-grandmother migrated to the US a hundred years ago. Really, no offense absolutely none. 
I am sorry you feel pressured in any way. Poland and France both are a great heritage to have and none more so than the other. Not the asshole you're right it isn't anyone's business what your background is. I don't understand why your wife is so hell-bent on you telling people you're Polish. Does she want people to make jokes? Have you ever done one of the ancestry kits? You might not even have any Polish in you. I have a third cousin with an Italian last name. He did a 23 me, it turns out, he isn't even Italian. And he even has that his grandparents are from Italy on his 23 me profile. My 23 me lists that I am Italian. And that at one point all of my family was Italian. Genetics are a funny thing. Why are you ashamed of your Polish descent? I don't understand why anyone gives a hoot where your grandparents are from. That's just weird. I don't think I have ever told anyone where mine are from. And if anyone asked, I'm pretty sure I'd be asking them why they need to know. Not the asshole it is so disheartening that you feel ashamed to state where you are from, because some racist assholes telling Polish jokes. Every time that happened you should have shut them down and called them out on it. I get it though it becomes exhausting having to defend yourself with every conversation about your heritage. Your wife is being extremely weird about it too. Again, maybe when she challenges you on it, in public, in front of others, call her out on it too. Tell her you don't want to have to defend yourself against racist Polish jokes. It might just finally shut her up. Not the asshole in any way. I know exactly what you're talking about. My husband is Romanian but has lived in Italy for several years. The racism is real. If people ask him where he's from and he says he lived in Italy, people get excited and want to talk about the food, the, the culture, the holidays they've had there. But when he follows up with but I come from Romania, the way their faces fall, and even sometimes scrunch up like they're smelling something bad is just tuck I hate it. Your wife is either super inconsiderate or she doesn't realize the problem. Not the asshole. This conversation Am I the asshole for arguing with my girlfriend in the gym because she disregarded our plans? Me and my girlfriend planned to go to the gym today. I messaged her in the morning saying I wanted us to go to the gym and she agreed. Fast forward, she decided to make plans with her friends regardless of the plans we had and then decided to ask me if I was alright with it. I said I'd rather she come with me and suggested she meet them after we finish in the gym. She said she'd tell them she can't come and I thought that was the end of it. 
Fast forward again to the gym, she said she'll only be in the gym with me for around 30 minutes rather than our usual 90 because she's going to meet her friends. This annoyed me and I told her I'd talk to her about this later. As we walked into the gym, I brought up my issue with her and said I didn't like what she did and I found it disrespectful to me and the plans I made for us to which she raised her voice and said she'd might as well just leave and began to storm off. I admit this annoyed me and I raised my voice not the point of a shout but enough to be heard. I called down again and explained my issue again and she just completely failed to see where I was coming from, even lying when I asked her how she'd feel if the roles were reversed she gets mad if I can't see her regardless of if it's my own fault or not. After some back and forth she says she'll just leave, I said cool leave and we left to get her stuff. After this I had a moment of clarity and felt I was wrong for getting so mad and so decided I'd wait for her and ask her to message me to let her know she got back safe so we could talk this out. She said no and later texted me saying I publicly embarrassed and she'd never speak to me again. Now I feel I may have been wrong and am just wondering if I should have dealt with this another way. TLDR girlfriend disregarded our plans to make plans with her friends, I got upset, we argued, she got mad and now wants nothing to do with me, am I the asshole? You're the asshole. It's not that serious. It's not like you had an actual gym date or something. You messaged her that morning, she said yes. Edit plus it doesn't sound like you asked her if she wanted to go. You said you told her I want us to go to the gym. Bit of a difference. Then you got mad because she could only do 30 minutes instead of the full 90? Just do the 30 together and you finish up on your own again, it's not that serious. Now, if she made a habit of making plans with you then flaking, I could see where the issue would be. Also, yeah, yelling at your GF in public is never a good look. You're the asshole. sorry but this seems controlling to me. It sounds like you go to the gym regularly since you said usual. People are busy at that age and it's hard to connect with your friends especially when you're in a relationship. Sometimes that requires you to disrupt a usual routine. Support her friendships and cut her some slack or you'll face resentment later on tbh. You're the asshole. Plans change. Maybe her friend just broke up and needs to talk it out, maybe her friend got a new job, or maybe this is the first time in three weeks they've seen each other. Shit happens. I found it disrespectful to me. She's not ditching an anniversary dinner with you. She's ditching a workout. Get over yourself. You're the asshole, you can't work out alone? She even made the effort to do both. It's the gym not some date night, you're being childish. You're the asshole. You started an argument as you walked into a public space. Never a good thing. No one wants to be publicly embarrassed. And having to listen to others arguing is incredibly annoying. Plus your complaint was small time and could have been handled privately with much more tact. Learn basic social cues. 1. She told you she'd rather go meet friends. 2. You said number 3. You told her to meet her friends after. 4. She compromised, went to gym with you for a bit, then vaped with friends. You go mad. 5. You started a feud in the gym. 6. You continued the fight in the gym. You're the asshole here. You sound controlling. It's not like you're actually spending time together at the gym you're working out, focusing in yourself, while she works out and focuses on herself. Why couldn't you have just said, hey, go with your friends, I'll work out, and we'll grab lunch dinner watch a movie after? You're the arsehole you sound very controlling. Just the way you're describing this situation is giving me the ick. Maybe you need to mature a bit more before you're ready to date. You're the asshole. You should never argue with your partner in public about anything, and try to avoid arguing at all. Especially over something so petty. You sound controlling AF. You know what would happen if me or my husband asked to change plans on each other like that? We'd say oh okay baby, have fun, I'll see you when you're back and we can do this next time. And that's why he's my husband, and not a boyfriend.
You're the asshole. You're the asshole pretty controlling Jez. Why isn't she allowed to change the plans? It's a gym session not a dinner date and why do you feel the need to start a fight in a public space as well? You're the asshole for one reason and one reason only. This annoyed me and I told her I'd talk to her about this later. As we walked into the gym, I brought up my issue with her. X200B. Why? If you have a problem with your partner you sort it in private not in public. Even trying to do it in public is you being a manipulative person because you think oh we're in public ain't no way she'll shout and storm off cause she'll be too embarrassed. You're the asshole, but you're still young and can learn better. You planned to go to the gym, not go on a week-long cruise. You're the asshole. It's just the gym. Pretty much any plans trump going to the gym. You're the asshole. If you want to have adult relationships, you need to behave like an adult. Grow up. You're the asshole. You told her you wanted her to go to the gym. She said yes but later changed her mind. That is normal and acceptable. You didn't agree and suggested she stick with the original plans I made for us. She found a compromise and you got mad at her. You're the asshole. Don't be so controlling. You're the asshole for arguing in a public place. It is embarrassing when you're fighting and everyone can tell. I totally get being annoyed with someone switching things up last minute. But she was still going to spend some gym time with you. You should have had that discussion at a later time. It made no sense to start that convo walking into gym. Lolly were to dude relax some. You're the asshole. She disregarded the plans you made for her, not plans you agreed together. I want us to go to the gym tonight is not the same as I'm going to the gym tonight, do you want to come with me? And no matter what agreement she made, she's allowed to change her mind. She compromised, half an hour in the gym with you then going to see her friends, and that still wasn't good enough, so you shouted at her in public. You were dictatorial and controlling. You're the asshole. What exactly did she do? She sounds afraid. Are you abusing her? I'll talk to you about this later. What is that? She made plans W her friend for after. Like you told her to. She said she'd tell them she couldn't go. Why would she go to this extreme? You sound so incredibly controlling. Arguing with her over this? Starting a fight in the gym? God I hope she sees this. Erta. So your plans changed. It is not the end of the world. Get over it and grow up. You were rude, bossy, a bully and a big self-centered jerk. Are you afraid to be at the gym alone? Sure sounds like crybaby behavior. Did you type in the wrong age? It sure sounds like you are a spoiled five-year-old. You're the asshole she wanted to go with her friends and you are being a controlling R. This annoyed me and I told her I'd talk to her about this later, yikes. You're the asshole, but not for yelling if she did so first. Going to the gym is something you can do literally the next day. Her plans weren't super serious. You acted as if you got a reservation and she messed up. Also strange that you started the argument in the gym. You're the asshole, yeah you might like working out together but so what if she doesn't this time or isn't there as long as usual to meet her friends? You've gone way over the top here my man. Or e teenagers in love you're the asshole. You're the asshole. You're making a change of plans personal, when there's no indication from your girlfriend's behavior that it ever was. You're allowed to be annoyed, I would be. But starting a fight was unnecessary and from her reaction, it suggests to me that your behavior went overboard. Would I be the arsehole if I told my husband I'm disappointed with the jewelry he ordered me? My husband and my wedding anniversary was this week, but we delayed celebrating until this weekend. We do traditional gifts for anniversaries and this year is flowers fruit. He is not great with gifts and asked for ideas last month and I sent him a link to an Etsy shop that makes birth flower jewelry and told him I'd like something with our son's birth flower. I also let him know he could just get me flowers or anything else and that would be fine as well. 
for his gift I picked up chocolate-covered strawberries, wine because grapes, and went to a fancy cheese shop to get some fruit-infused cheeses, meat, etc. to make a really nice charcuterie spread for tonight. I'm going to create a picnic in our living room, and I think it's going to be really cute. I also got him a card and wrote a heartfelt message. Just for reference. I assumed that he had figured my gift out before our anniversary, so imagine my surprise when I opened a prime box and found a jewelry box. I didn't open it but it was labeled birth flower necklace so it was obvious. Honestly I'm a little disappointed but I'm not sure if I'm being unfair and could use some perspective. 1. If he ordered the gift via Prime that means that he didn't order it until after the actual day of our anniversary had passed. 2. The box was labeled with my birth flower, not my son's. Which is not what I wanted. 3. The box labeling looks very cheap. And looking on Amazon I think he ordered a low quality piece think Chinese Amazon front, $20. When we were younger I would wear jewelry like this and it would always fall apart, color my skin, and or tarnish quickly. I'm a bit upset. I spent a significant amount of consideration and money on his gift and he totally flubbed mine in a way that specifically seems very uncaring. He's going to be giving me the gift tonight so I have about 4 hours to figure out how I'm going to respond. I don't want to ruin our plans with a fight but I'd like to gently tell him I'd rather he order something I will actually wear. Or should I just thank him, not say anything, and just not wear the gift? Am I being entitled? If he not only got you low quality stuff, but also got it after you anniversary had passed, it means he didn't put much thought into the gift, but I wouldn't confront him about it before your plans. Maybe tomorrow or sometime this week say that what he did bothered you and see where it goes from there. I think it needs to be phrased carefully but not the asshole. It's not necessarily the gift itself that's bothering you, it's the fact that he didn't listen to you and didn't put in the effort that you were hoping for. I fully admit that I don't care for anniversaries but if it was important to my partner, I will absolutely put in the effort for them because of the fact it is important to them. You gave him an 